Hey everyone, Grant K for the Flame Learning Channel. In part 1 of Active Colour Management in Flame 2017 Extension 1, we discussed the core concepts of the new colour management in Flame. So all the clips are tagged with a colour space, and the colour policies define how we work with colour in a project. We also looked at the Colour Management Preferences menu, and learned how the colour policy influences the project, import rules and viewing rules. As a reminder, the colour policy is XML based, and changes can be applied in application or externally, depending on your circumstances and facility. In this video, we'll run through the functionality of colour managing media as it's imported into the Flame products. This will include colour space tagging, auto conversions and the import rules. So to help you with the learning curve, we'll start from the project creation for the initial setup. Create a new project, and set the settings up to match your production specifics. In the Colour Policy presets, ensure that Legacy is selected. This is the default choice, because you can start enabling the various tools when you need them. The other Colour Policy presets already contain rules and settings, which will automatically colour manage the projects when chosen. So as a gentle way of easing you into these tools and workflows, we are using Legacy, which starts Flame in a non-colour managed state. Create the project, and launch Flame. In this empty project, go to the Preferences menu, and choose the Colour Management tab. The project colour space is set to Unknown, which means any media you generate will be tagged Unknown by default. We'll talk about this in much greater detail in the Legacy Colour Management Workflow video. But I want to quickly point out the import rules. The only rule you will see, is that Flame will import all media as unknown or untagged. This is the exact same behaviour as previous versions of Flame, where media is not assigned any colour space, and you manually need to colour manage inside of Flame. When you start adding import rules, you can get Flame to recognise certain naming formats and patterns, and this will allow you to automatically tag colour spaces onto various media. Since we are starting at the beginning, I'll show you how to manually work with colour spaces, and then we'll start creating import rules. So close the Preferences, and switch to the Media Hub. I'll navigate to a root directory, which contains a variety of formats that you might use during production. This includes some Rec 709, some ARRI Log C material, and there is also a directory containing CGI, which was rendered in a scene linear colour space. Now I want to point out that colour management is considered as a general setting, so you will find the options in the general menus, and not format specific settings. As it currently stands, going through the various directories and looking at the various formats, you will see that every clip is set as unknown or untagged. Even if you call up the preview window, and look at the clip metadata, the colour space is untagged. Basically Flame has no idea what the colour space is per clip. This is because we haven't set up any input rules for automation. We'll look at that later, but let's focus on the main colour management options. The first option, is to tag the colour space onto the media. This means the colour space will be assigned as part of the clip metadata. It does not change or convert the media in any way. The default setting for tagging is from file or rules. So if you had set a bunch of import rules for importing media, the various formats would be automatically tagged with their appropriate colour space. And as an extra tip, for specific camera formats like RED, ARRI RAW and SONY RAW, Flame will automatically apply the appropriate settings based on the manufacturer's supplied settings. Other files, such as OpenEXR for example, can also have the colour space embedded in the header, such as an ASUS 2065-1 tag, and that will be read by Flame. And if you are using open clips in your workflow, you can embed the colour space in those clips as well. 
So that's why the setting says from file or rules. As I said, we'll come back to import rules and automation later. Now since the legacy colour policy starts off with only the default import rule, the media is tagged as unknown. Now it's actually pretty easy to tag clips without setting up any import rules. Click the pull down menu and you will see a variety of options containing camera formats and other varieties of colour spaces. For example, I'll choose the REC709 option from the broadcast options. If you navigate into the REC709 folder, you will see any imported clips will be tagged as REC709. You can select the clips and drag them into the Media Hub. Throughout the flame pipeline, the media will be tagged with a REC709 colour space, unless you explicitly change it. Now I'll navigate to the folder containing a bunch of ARRI Log C QuickTime media. It does not matter if the media is Log C, S Log, or any log variation, it is being tagged as media with a REC709 colour space because that is how your general settings for colour management are configured. So you could change the tagging to a log colour space, which is ARRI Log C in this case, and this would be reflected in the media. Dragging any of these clips into the Media Hub will tag them as ARRI Log C colour space. So if you're just getting started, and you have no idea how to set up the import rules, it's easy to manually tag your media, and then Flame will know the colour space of each clip. But I want to reiterate that we are assigning a colour space with tagging, and not converting the media. Now if you did want to convert your media on import, which some people like to do in order to work in a common colour space, you would choose the Auto Convert option in the Colour Management settings. As before, I will just do this manually without automation using the import rules. So in order to perform a manual conversion, I suggest you first define your working colour space, since that will filter the list of input space options to the recommended values for that working space. Then select your input colour space. By doing this, Flame will work out the correct input transforms needed to mathematically convert from the input colour space to the working colour space. For example, I'll choose ACES CG as the working colour space. So when you look at the input colour space options, they will update to give you the choices that will allow for a mathematically accurate conversion to ACES CG. This will change depending on whatever working colour space you want to use. So if I set the input colour space to ARRI Log C, and return to the ARRI QuickTime Media, you can select a clip or clips, and you can see the auto conversion has already taken place in the thumbnails and viewer. The preview metadata also tells you the colour space. If you drag any clips from the Media Hub, they will be converted and tagged as ACES CG. So in summary, auto convert gives you an easy way to assign the input colour space and then convert it into the working colour space in two simple steps. The third option in the colour management settings is Use LUT. This is a legacy feature from previous versions, and is a manual based approach that allows you to load a 1D LUT, 3D LUT, or colour transform and convert the media. It is a very powerful tool, but can be quite technical and complex. Flame automates a lot of these manual processes with tagging and auto convert, so things should be a lot easier with those options. However, even when using your own LUT, you still need to set the tagging menu to tell Flame how to interpret the resulting media. Now up to this point, I've insisted on setting up the colour spaces manually for tagging and auto convert. This has hopefully given you a sense of how Flame is managing colour spaces for imported media. Now let's talk about the import rules. You have the ability to automate the colour space recognition, as well as the tagging of your media using the import rules. You can have as many rules as you like, 
and they are stored in the colour policy. This means once you've set them up, you can copy them between projects, as well as export the colour policy to be used on other systems. So it's actually very flexible for small, mid-range and large facilities. Let's take a look at how you can set up an import rule. Open the Preferences menu and choose the Colour Management tab. Under the Import Rules, you can create a new rule. Let's make this rule for REC709 Media. Now you can identify a file through its file extension and a naming pattern in order to tag it. For example, I know my REC709 clips are QuickTime files. So for the file type, you can type MOV to match any file with an extension of .mov in lower case. Or you can type open square bracket, capital M little m, close square bracket, open square bracket, capital O little o, close square bracket, open square bracket, capital V little v, close square bracket. This pattern says that any files ending with mov in any combination of upper or lower case will be considered by this rule. You can also add a pattern entry if the files follow a specific naming. For example, type star mvi star. So any files that contain mvi and has a file extension of mov will be considered by this rule. Finally, choose the colour space. I'll set this to Rec 709. Now let's add one more rule to show how it can work with multiple rules. Create a new rule. This time we'll use the rule for Ari Logsy Media. The media is also QuickTime, but in this instance we'll create the rule based on a directory or file path. So any files in a certain directory will be tagged with a colour space according to this rule. My directory containing the files is called Ari Logc. So I'll type star Ari Logc star. Just for your information, the matching system is based on the standard Unix glob system. Now let's set the colour space to Ari Log C. So there are our two rules, and what's important to note is that the rules run in priority from top to bottom. Top rules are tried first, and then it moves down the list until it finds one that matches. So you can have multiple rules doing very specific things for a variety of formats. And if none of the earlier rules match, the last rule will tag it as unknown or untagged, or whatever else you select. Now close the Preferences menu. In the Media Hub, switch the Colour Management settings to Tag Only, and change the setting to From File or Rules. Now if you navigate to the REC709 directory, you will notice all the clips are automatically tagged as REC709. And if you navigate to the Ari Log C directory, you will see the files tagged as Ari Log C. So having the import rules makes tagging very fast and easy. The same applies to Auto Convert. If you switch the settings over and set the input colour space to From File or Rules, Flame will choose the correct input colour space for the media, and then perform a conversion to the working colour space. In the preview window, you will see the input and tagged colour space, and if you look at the media list, you will also find all the colour space information relative to the media displayed in columns. So just by using the import rules and choosing either tag or auto convert, Flame takes care of the rest as you drag the media into the media hub. Now I want to mention this again in case you missed it. That importing media in camera native file formats, such as RED, ARRI RAW, and Sony RAW, will be automatically recognized by Flame. So it is not necessary to define input rules for them. The recommended way of importing these is to work in auto convert mode and set the input space to From File or Rules, and then select your desired working space. Flame will overwrite the format specific colour space menus for that camera to obtain ASUS values, 
and then convert those into the selected working space. Note that even in Auto Convert mode, you can set the debayering, ISO and other camera options as usual. Let's switch to the Timeline area. Now the implications of Colour Managing Media on Import ripples through the entire application and any processes you perform. This starts off in the Viewers and Thumbnails. Firstly, the thumbnails in the Reels show the appropriate colour space and the metadata is tagged on the clip. And if you switch to the Viewports, including the full screen Viewers, the Viewers will now actively update to show you the correct colours based on the viewing rules set out in the Colour Management Preferences. The Transforms in the Viewers will update based on the colour space tagged to the clip. You can also bypass the Viewing Transform if you want to just perform a comparison. We'll discuss Colour Managing the Viewports and the Viewing Rules in the next video. Finally, if you have imported media and you need to adjust the Colour Management settings after import, it's pretty straightforward. Select the clip and go to the Clip Processing settings in the Timeline. In this menu, you have access to the Colour Management settings and you can change whatever you need. This will also be reflected in the Viewport. And if you are in Batch working on a specific clip in a composite, you can also use the Colour Management node to convert the colour space with similar options to what you've just seen. Just note that if you change the pre-processing settings of a clip in Batch, you are only changing that instance of the clip. If it occurs elsewhere in the project, it will still have the previous tagging. For more information on these features or any other Colour Management functionality, please read the Colour Management documentation for Flame. In the next video, we'll discuss how the viewports are actively colour managed using the viewing rules. This ensures that you're seeing the correct colours using the right display transforms for the various media. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Flame Learning Channel for future videos.